In this video, I'll talk about some basic probability concepts and work through some example problems. So some definitions that we're going to be using are that when we have an experiment, that's anything from flipping a coin, rolling a die, or even a scientific experiment, something that's repeatable, where we want to try to understand what we can expect the outcomes of that experiment to be. The sample space is the set of all of the equally likely outcomes of that experiment. And the phrase equally likely is very important here. We'll talk about a little bit about why that matters. When we want to talk about probability, it's important that we count our sample space to make all of the outcomes the same likelihood. And then an event is a subset of that sample space that contains the desired outcomes. And now desired there just means whatever it is we're looking for in that experiment, whatever it is we're hoping to find the probability of. So then we have this formula for probability, which is that we count up the number of things in the event, we count up the number of things in the sample space, and we create that fraction, and that fraction is going to be our probability. So let's work through some sample problems. So what's the probability that on a roll of two six-sided dice, the sum is at least eight? Well, here we need to understand that even though we have a repetition being allowed, we can roll the same number on our two six-sided dice, we need to understand that we need to make order matter here. And the way that we typically represent this when we have two dice is we make a little chart where we have the possibilities of the first die, one through six, and the possibilities of the, seven die, uh, the second die, one through six. And then we're going to understand that we have 36 possible equally likely outcomes. So the size of our sample space is going to be 36, the 36 entries of this chart. And now how many of these entries have a sum that's at least eight? Well, that's going to be the bottom right hand corner of this chart. If you think of this as one, 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 two, one, three, one, four, and so on, this chart gets filled in looking something like this. Now we wanna identify which of those possibilities have a sum that's at least eight. Well, this part of our chart all of those are the results where my sum is at least 8, which means the size of my event is going to be 15. If I count that up, there's 15 of those possibilities. And so that means that my probability, the probability of my event, is the number of things in my event, 15, divided by the size of my sample space, 36. Similar problem, what's the probability that on a roll of three normal six-sided dice, the maximum of the resulting values is five? So in other words, all of the numbers on the three individual dice that come up, the maximum of those is the number five. So again, we'll have to think of this as making order matter. If we don't make order matter, then we're going to have duplicate results that we're not counting as equally likely. And so the size of our sample space is we wanna think about a first roll, a second roll, and a third roll. We have six possibilities for each of those roles, which means that our sample space is 216 equally likely outcomes. Now, what do we need to have happen for the maximum of the individual die rolls to be five? Well, there's two things that need to happen here. We can't have any sixes, and we have to have at least one five. So we must have at least one five and no sixes. So let's count no sixes first. In that case, the number of ways that the number that we can have no sixes, if we think of a first die, a second die, and a third die, is going to be five times five times five. If we can't roll a six, then we only have five possibilities for each of those dice, which means we have 125 possibilities where we don't roll any sixes. But among those 125 possibilities are some possibilities where we didn't roll any fives, and we want the maximum of the resulting values to be five, which means we have to roll at least one five, and so the way we're going to do this is by subtracting off how many possibilities did we not roll any fives. So no fives. Well, we already didn't roll any sixes, which means we have four possibilities for each die roll. One, two, three, or four, and that works out to be 64. But those are the possibilities that we don't want to count here, which means we need to subtract 125 minus 64 gives us 61. So 61 possibilities where we didn't roll any sixes, but we did roll at least one five. And so our probability of our event that we're counting here is 61 divided by 216. And finally, we have a committee of three people that's randomly selected from a group of eight men and six women. What is the probability that the committee has more women than men? Well, again, we've seen these committee type problems when we've discussed counting and combinatorics. And so the size of our sample space is going to be 14, choose three. In a committee, the order of our choices doesn't matter. And we have 14 people to pick from. We want to choose three of them. So that's going to be 14 times 13 times 12 divided by three times two times one. And that works out to be 364. 
So how do we count now the number of committees that have more women than men? Well, there's two ways that can happen. Two women and one man, or three women and no men. So we're going to count those as two separate cases and then add the results together. So two women and one man, we're first going to count how many ways we can choose two of our six women to be on the committee, and then the way, number of ways we can choose one of our eight men to be on the committee. Six choose two times eight choose one works out to be 120. And then three women and no men, that's going to be six choose three, because we don't pick any men, so we only pick three people out of the six women that we have available, and that works out to be 20. 120 plus 20 is 140, and so our probability of our event is 140 divided by 364. So the basic idea is to apply the same techniques that we learned when we learned about counting using our formulas and just making sure that when we do this, we have our possibilities, our sample space be equally likely outcomes.